Hi there guys, welcome to Seasick Pirate Studios. My name is Curtis and in today's episode we're going to be painting Captain Saul Tarvitz of the Emperor's Children from the Horus Heresy character series. If you're a fan of the Heresy and you've read the Heresy novels, you'll know that Saul Tarvitz was a standout character for the Loyalists and the Empress Children during the early part of the Heresy. We did an unboxing on this miniature earlier on on the channel, so if you want to check that video out, please click on the link in the top corner of the screen. But for now, let's crack on with the painting. So grab your paints, grab your brushes and let's get started. I've sub-assembled parts of Saul so we can get into those hard to reach areas like behind the power pack and around the neck of the armour. I've primed the majority of this model with Chaos Black bar the bare head which is undercoated white. This is because the tones on the face and the hair are a lot lighter than the rest of the model. So to start with we're going to base the armour with Nagaroth Knight. This is to lay down a foundation for our next colour, which is going to be Zerus Purple. We're then going to do a recess wash with Null Oil. And then we're going to do a highlight of Gene Steeler Purple around all those nice purple panels. So we've got some Nagroth Knight on our palette. I've watered this down. So we've got a nice texture to the paint, a nice consistency. And what we're going to do is just paint this all over the miniature. So after a couple of layers of Nagaroth Knight, we've now got a decent foundation to build upon. So our next base colour is going to be Zerus Purple. So we've got some on our palette just here. We're going to get some onto our medium base brush. And what we're going to do is just layer this over the top, all over the miniature. Now this may be quite see-through as you can see, but after a couple of layers, you'll get a nice, rich purple colour. So after a couple of layers of Zerus purple, we've now got our lovely Empress Children purple down there and we're ready to wash all the recesses. So we've got some Null Oil on our palette. Just gonna get a detail brush. I'm just gonna load some up onto the end of our brush. And what you want to do is all of these lines here in between the armor and the trim, you just want to go down all of those. Just drop in that wash into the recess. You want to go around the entire miniature with this. And don't get too worried if you apply a little bit too much Null Oil because you can always go around and tidy up those armor panels with some Zerus Purple. So we're gonna continue going around in all the recesses. This part is a bit time consuming, but once it's done, you'll get some nice definition on the armor. So now the Norn Oil wash has dried in all the recesses, we've got some nice definition on those armor plates. So now we're going to move on to our highlight of Jean Steeler Purple. So we've got some here on our palette. We're gonna get our fine detail brush, Gonna get some onto the brush there. Now you want a good point on your brush. You wanna make sure you water this color down just a little bit. And what you want to do is on all the edges of the armor, just wanna drag your brush along those edges like that. So 
So take your time. You need a steady hand. And you might want to go over these again because you want to build up a nice colour on this highlight. So after a highlight of Jean Steeler Purple, our armour is looking really nice. But I want to take it a step further. I'm going to do a very fine edge highlight around all those highlights we've just done with Slanesh Grey. So I've got some here on our palette, I've watered it down. We're going to go with our fine detail brush again. Just going to get some on the end. And what you want to do is all those highlights you've just done, you just want to go over those highlights just on the inside. just on the corners like that so after a highlight of slanesh grey on top of all of those jean stealer purple highlights all of the purple parts on the model are now completed so for the next step we're going to be moving on to blacking in all of the areas we're going to be painting black so we're going to be painting the leather strap, we're going to be painting all the tabards hanging off his belt, and we're also going to be painting the ribbing between the armour. So for the ribbing, we're going to give them a base of Abaddon Black. We're then going to highlight them with Eshing Grey. And for all the tabards and the leather belts, we're going to be giving them a base coat of Abaddon Black. We're then going to give them a highlight of Incubi Darkness and then a very fine highlight of the blue horror just to finish them off. So we've got some Abaddon Black on our palette. I've watered it down. Just gonna get some onto our detail brush. Now we're just gonna paint all the ribbing between the armor. Just being careful of that lovely purple armor that we've painted. So just take your time. You might find you need a few coats as well just to get some decent coverage. So we're also going to paint this part around here. We're going to do all the wires and all the breathing vents on the armour. And we're also going to paint these tabards down here. So while I'm blacking in all these areas, we're just going to cut away to a quick shout out to one of my favourite podcasts to listen to. Do you like heresy? Do you like podcasts? Do you like Fosfex? Then check out the Fosfex Party Podcast. They talk everything heresy with no holds barred. Hobby progress, new releases, black library books, 3D printing and plenty of banter. So whether you're a traitor or a loyalist, log on to SoundCloud or check out their Facebook page for more details. And remember, why kill your enemies with bolt guns when you can always use Phosphex? So now we've gone around and blacked in all the areas that we're going to be painting darker. We're now going to focus on the belt strap and the tabard. And we're going to highlight those with some Incubi Darkness. So we've got some here on our palette. I've watered it down. Want a good tip on your brush. Now what we're going to do is just highlight down each side of these bits of the tabard. Now we want quite a broad highlight, so don't be scared. To paint some thicker lines than what you usually would when you highlight. 
So now the Incubi darkness has dried, we're gonna give it a very fine highlight of blue horror. So we're gonna get some on the end of our fine detail brush. Now you want a good point here. And what you want to do, too much on there. What you want to do, just draw a thin line down each of these leather straps. So now all the black parts have been highlighted, we're now going to move on to painting the rest of the armour, which is going to be white. So, all these parts in here, inside the shoulder pads and on this part of the leg as well, we're going to give them a base of grey here. We're then going to layer them up with Wolf Wang Grey. We're then going to give them a wash with Contrast Apocryphy White, just to give them some shade. And then we're going to highlight the areas with white scar. So we've got some grace here on our palette. So I've watered it down. Now you want a detailed brush for this and you need to be very careful of where you're applying this color. So what we want to do is start on the edges and just work our way in. Now, if you find the paint is being a little bit hard to control, just add a touch more water because there's so much detail on this model and so many hard places to reach. You might just need the paint to run it. So after a couple of layers of grey here, we're now going to start layering up with Ulf Wang Grey. So we've watered some down and we've got some on our palette. Now the thinner the paint, the better, because we don't want to lose all these details around here. And we're just going to paint this over the top to keep on building up that nice solid white colour. So now that a couple of layers of Ulf Wang Grey have dried on top of the grace here, we've now got a nice solid white to work on. So we're now going to shape those areas with Contrast Apocryphy White. So we've got some here on our palette. We don't need a lot on our brush. And what you want to do is just paint this over all the white areas. Just getting all the shade in there. So now that the Apocryphy White has dried, we've got some lovely shade all over that Wolf Wang Grey. So now we're going to highlight in between all of the detailed areas with some white scar. So we've got our fine detail brush. You only need a tiny line in between all these fine parts that really brings out the shade a bit more and it makes all those nice areas that we're going to be painting gold stand out really nicely so now that the white scar has dried all over the shoulder pad areas all of those white areas are now complete so for the next step, we're going to be taking on the most complicated part on this miniature, all the gold details. So we're going to give them all a base with Retributor Armour. We're then going to wash over the top with some Reichland Flesh Shade. And then we're going to give them a highlight, with Liberator Gold. So we've got some Retributor Armour on our palette. You need your fine detail brush for this part and a steady hand. You want a good point on your brush. So for all of these small parts here, what you want to do is just paint all these gold details in. Use the side of your brush. Just follow those details around. Now you may find yourself going a bit cross-eyed at how small these details are. 
So just take a break every five minutes. So you won't strain your eyes. So after going around the model with Retributor armor and carefully painting all of those details on the white areas, we're now gonna give them a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. So we're gonna get some onto our brush. And what we're gonna do is just carefully paint this all over those gold areas. And if you do find yourself spilling over onto some of the white, just dry your brush off and mop that area up. And if it does stain the white, you can always go back over with some Ulfwan Grey or some white scar. So just take your time, just work this over nicely and we'll get some nice shade all over the gold. So now the Reichland Flesh Shade has dried all over the gold, we've got some nice definition in there. So now we're going to give it a highlight with some Liberator Gold. So we've got some here on our palette, we're going to take our fine detail brush. Now you want a good point on your brush here. And what you want to do is just along all the edges of the gold, you just want to highlight just around the edges to make that gold really pop. So now that all the gold is now complete, we're going to move on to all the metal parts of the miniature. So we're going to base these with lead belcher. We're then going to give them a wash of Norn Oil. Then we're going to highlight them with Iron Hand Steel and then give them a very fine highlight with Rune Fang Steel. Now for the blade, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to base coat it with Iron Breaker. We're then going to wash it with Norn Oil we're going to highlight it with Rune Fang Steel and then we're going to use some Contrast Aphromatic Blue to give it that glowing energy. So we've got some lead belcher on our palette. We're just going to get some onto our brush and what we're going to do is we're going to go around and base all of the parts that we're going to be painting metal. So we're going to be doing all the bottoms of the tabards just here. We're going to be painting this vent of the armour just there. We're going to be doing these parts of the power pack. We're going to be doing the vents as well. And on the cloak, we're going to be painting the bolter. So after going around the miniature and basing all the metal areas with lead belcher, I've also painted the sword with iron breaker. Now we're going to give them a wash with Norn Oil. So I've got some Norn Oil on our palette here. Just gonna gather some up onto our brush. And what we want to do is just paint this all over the metal areas. So make sure that sits in all the recesses. Just to give those metal areas some shade. And just watch out for pooling. If you do find any pooling, just dry your brush off and mop up those areas. And all around the bottom here. Now that all the Norn Oil has dried all over those areas, we're now going to highlight them with Iron Hand Steel. So we've got some Iron Hand Steel on our palette, we've got our fine detail brush here, and what we're going to do is just paint all the raised areas, just give these metal areas a nice highlight. So to highlight the Charnable Saber, we're going to be using Runefang Steel. So we've got some here on our brush. And what you want to do is just highlight the very edges of the blade. This power module. Want to highlight that and go all along the 
power line. You want to highlight all the edges of the blade. Just use the side of your brush. So now that the Runefang steel has dried, I'm going to add a tiny bit of Stormhost Silver just to that power module, just before we put the Aphomatic Blue on. This will really make it pop and make it look like it's glowing with energy. So we've got some Stormhost Silver on our brush here, and we're just gonna paint this over the power module and a nice thin line of it over that power line. Now that the Stormhose Silver has dried all over the Charnable Sabre, we're going to apply some Aphromatic Blue to make it look like it's glowing with energy. So we're going to get some Aphromatic Blue onto our brush. Now I'm using this straight out of the pot. Now you just want to load your brush up to something a bit like this. And what you want to do is just paint this over that area that we painted the Stormhouse Silver all over the power module. Now it doesn't matter if you get any of this on the blade because that will just dry and it will look like it's glowing on all those areas. So now that all the metals are complete, we're going to be focusing on the cloak. So we're going to be painting the inside of the cloak red. So we're going to be basing it with corn red. We're then going to give it a wash with Drucci Eye Violet that's been watered down with some Lamium Medium. We're then going to highlight it with Evil Sun Scarlet. Now we're also going to be using Lamium Medium with that. This is to help all the colours blend in nicely and give that cloak a nice transition. So we've got some corn red on our palette. We're going to get some onto our brush and we're just going to base the entire cloak with this colour. Now you may need a couple of coats just to hide all the black undercoat. So once this coat is dried, apply another one so we've got a nice decent foundation. So now that the corn red has dried all over the cloak, we're now going to give it a wash with our mix of Druji Eye Violet and Lamium Medium. So I've got some here on our palette. I've mixed this at roughly one to one. So we're just gonna mix this all in together. going to get too much on our brush but what we want to do is just layer this all over the red of the cloak. Now we want to focus most of the wash into all those recesses just to pick out where the creases of the cloth are. So now we've got some shade all over the cloak that's dried really nicely and blended in quite well. So now we're going to highlight it. So we've got some Evil Sun Scarlet on our palette. Just going to get our detail brush. Now we just want to use the side of our brush here just to highlight all along the edges. So with the inside of the cloak painted, we're now going to be focusing on the outside of the cloak. So we're going to give it a base with Grace here. We're then going to give it a all over wash with contrast apocryphary white mixed with some contrast medium. We're then going to layer up with Wolfwang grey and then we're going to highlight with white scar. So we're going to be using the same process on the plume on the helmet as well. We've got some Grace here on our palette. And we're just going to start layering up. Now you may need a couple of layers 
just to go over the black undercoat but once you get a nice solid foundation then we can move on to the next step so after a couple of layers of grace here we're now going to wash all over the cloak and the plume with a 50 50 mix of apocryphary white and contrast medium so i'm going to mix these two together going to get our wash brush and what we're going to do is just paint this all over the cloak So we want to focus this into the recesses mainly to get some shade and around the trim of the cloak at the bottom. Now just keep an eye out for pooling. If you do get any pooling just dry your brush off and mop up the excess. So now that the apocryphary white is dried all over that gray sear base, we're now gonna start layering up with some Ulfwang gray. So I've got some here on our palette, watered it down. We're just gonna get our detail brush and what we're gonna do is just go over all these lines, just work our way down. making sure we leave all that shade in the recesses. Three, two, one. So after a few layers of all one gray, we've layered up that cloak really nicely and we're ready for our highlight of white scar. So we've got our fine detail brush. We're just gonna get some on the end. And just like with all highlights, we're just gonna work our way down these lines highlighting all the raised areas just making them stand out so now that the rest of the miniatures complete we're going to focus on Saul's head so for the flesh we're going to be painting it with Cadian flesh tone we're then going to give it an all-over wash with contrast to Gulliman flesh we're then going to wash around the eyes and around the mouth with Norn Oil. And then we're going to highlight up with some Kislev Flesh. So we've got some Cadian Flesh Tone on our palette. I've watered this down. Just gonna get some onto our brush. And what we're gonna do is just paint this all over the face. So after a couple of layers of Cadian Flesh Tone, that's now dried and we've got a nice foundation to work on. So what we're going to do next is give it an all over wash with Gulliman Flesh, which are mixed one to one with some contrast medium. This is just to dilute it a little bit so it's not too strong and it doesn't make it look like he's been on holiday in Spain for three weeks. So we're going to get some onto our brush and we're just going to paint this all over the face. So now that the Gulliman flesh has dried, we're now going to start layering up on all the raised areas with Cadian flesh tone again. So we're going to get some onto our fine detail brush. And what we want to do is just paint all the raised areas on the face, at the end of the nose, along his brow cheekbones, the lips and the chin. So after layering up with Cadian Flesh Tone, we're now going to get some Norn Oil and just drop it into the recesses of the mouth and just around the eyes. So we don't need a lot of Norn Oil on our brush here. We only need a tiny bit. to do is just drop this around the eyes, the 
inside the mouth. If you find you've applied too much, just dry your brush off and just mop up the excess wash and just move it around. Just focus it. This gives definition under that brow and really brings out the shadow. So now that the Norn Oil has dried in those recesses, we're now ready to go with our final highlight of the Kiss Left Flesh. So we've got some here on our palette. Just gonna layer up our fine detail brush. And what you want to do is all of those highlights we did earlier, we just want to go over the very edges of them with Kiss Left Flesh, because this color can be quite bright but when it dries, it'll blend in nicely with the rest of the flesh tones. So now that I've painted in the eyes and the gold plate on his head, we're now gonna focus on his hair. So we're going to base his hair with Morgast Bone. We're then going to give it a wash with Contrast Skeleton Horde. And then we're gonna highlight it with Flayed One Flesh. So I've got some Morgast Bone on our palette. Just going to get some on our brush. And what we're going to do is just paint all the hair. Just cover all the white up. Just being careful of the face. So this may take a couple of coats to get a nice foundation to work on. So once the first layer is dried, just give it another thin coat. So now that the Morgast bone has dried all over the hair, we've now got a decent foundation to work on. And for the next step, we're going to use some Contrast Skeleton Horde, which I've diluted down with some Contrast Medium. We're gonna get this on our brush, and we're just gonna paint this all over the hair, just to get some shade. So now that the skeleton hoard has dried all over the hair, we've got some good definition in there and we're ready for the last step. So we're gonna give it a highlight with Flayed One Flesh. We've got some here on our palette. Now you need your fine detail brush. And what you want to do is just highlight the strands of hair with the side of your brush. So now that the Flayed One Flesh has dried all over the hair, that's the head complete. So all we need to do now is assemble the miniature, base it to match the rest of our army, and he's ready for the battlefield. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please visit my channel and check out my other content. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment on which Horace Heresy character you'd like to see painted next. And don't forget to check out the Fospex Party podcast. Take care and we'll see you next time.